Okay, now the fun part. We're gonna get our seat installed. Um, shouldn't say installed, we're gonna fit, a, fit our seat. I wanna make sure that my lines that I've created in the saddle seat and the lines I've created on the back of the seat line up with the cannel and same up front. So it's centered, okay? First thing I'm gonna do is come back here and get my ears where I want them. I've got my marks, I know where I wanna be. We've created those to start with. So I'm gonna come in here, get them set, make sure I'm centered with my line, which I am. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and run a screw down there. Um, a lot of guys use a nail, that's fine. I like screws, they're just easier for me. And I'm just gonna get these ears set so they don't move. Notice we have a wrinkle here. Most seats do. I'm gonna try to compress that as we go. Gotta draw down. Connect you. Okay. Uh, again, we're, we're going to form this seat in. You'll see I've got some wrinkles here. When I start strapping this down, that, that wrinkle's going to be there. So I want to try to compress that wrinkle. This is really something that's hard to teach. You've got to do it. You've got to learn where it wants to go. Every piece of leather is different. I mean, it just you've just got to work it in. And So I'm going to slowly start taking that in. Um, and compressing that wrinkle. Kind of a notch at a time. If you try to do too much, every, anybody that's done them knows that we get a wrinkle right here that sometimes you can't get rid of. stick that'll help you smooth out seats you want to make sure you don't go past your draw down to try to help keep these seats smooth this particular wrinkle kind of wants to go out the front and a lot of times they want to come back into the panel on my front line so I gotta make sure and fix that when I get here's this wrinkle. Get back on my line here. Okay, now you can see that relief that I was showing you is way above the handhole here, okay? So I know that I can cut just a little bit more, but I wanna make sure when I do that, that I stay right on that line. And, and it's tight right now, so you gotta be really careful because your knife will just wanna whoosh, real fast. So just because of the pressure of the leather so I'm just going to cut a little bit more relief out of that and that's going to get me a place for this to kind of fold over and start getting out of my way you can see now it's wanting to 
come up over that swell. Again, I'm just filling around trying to get them wrinkles compacted because I want this seat nice and tight through here before I make any of these these cuts around this swell so I'm just making sure my wrinkles are all compressed before we go to that Now that I got the base of my seat nice and tight, all the wrinkles compressed in here, I'm gonna come start making this cut around the left side of the swell. Um, this again is one of those things you gotta, when I learned, I went an inch at a time. And I cut an inch and I look back, and what the idea is is to make sure all our screw holes and that we're high enough to cover up all our rigging and everything as we come around the swell. And a lot of times when you're coming around this, you think you're in the right place, so you make a four inch line and then you cut it and now you've, it, it's hard to fix it. Sometimes it's way off. So I just like to cut a little bit at a time, guys. Um, and I'm, I'm looking from up here down below to know where them lines are. Um, I'm about, I don't know, probably looks like about three quarters of an inch from my and hole edge where my groundwork ends there um, and I want to be out in front of it a little ways um, as I told you earlier we want to make sure we're not marking too far at, at a time I really like to um, take my time here and make sure I got good coverage um, but I'm looking down right here where I can see the corner of my hand hole and that's how I'm going to get the shape of my hand hole here and where these are square skirts, I kind of like to bring this up to a point on my square, square skirts. So I'm going to come off something like this um, instead of doing, the, doing it completely round. Hopefully everybody can see that. So I'm just going to come up about like that. And then I'm going to point it off and come in this direction. I'm going to start with that little cut and start getting the relief and pulling the seat. As I go, I'm gonna tighten that seat around the swell as tight as I can get by hand, and then when we get down here, ways will we will uh, get it snappy tight. Get a little relief there double check it make sure that you're you're covered and then I'm gonna go inch inch and a half at a time from here on out because as I come down here I'm able to pull a seat back and forth and see where that lines coming and uh, I've got about that far where where it's it's not too scary but when you start getting down into here, you've got to turn a lot faster. You got to start taking that cut a lot faster than you than you think in order to make it work. So I'm going to come in there and get this inch cut.
this swell cover has a welt in it so you're not very there's no wrinkles or anything that I have to worry about but so I'm gonna put it fairly low just making sure if there's any nails or anything or screws then I'm keeping that seat covered So I know it's hard for everyone to see, but right in here is where I want to start really paying attention. If I was to, you know, from from up here, it looks like I want to come clear down into here. But what happens is, is as I do that, this cut gets way too deep and doesn't keep my swell covered. So you can see right here, I'm actually starting to make a little turn um, into the cut and just taking my time getting around here. See that little turn? Because as I'm pulling this and stretching this seat down around here, I don't want it to be way down here. You can always take more out, but it's pretty, not pretty, it is impossible to add leather to leather. We're not welding. So I like to be on the safe side things and as you can see it's coming together just fine which is unusual when you're trying to teach usually you screw up so again just take your time go an inch maybe a little more than an inch at a time and I promise this knife is sharp this is a pretty good piece of leather here and you can see as it's coming Right here, I'm about the point of the swell cover, or the swell. And so this, this turn needs to be fairly sharp. I'm coming around. You guys all see that? Just remember, a little bit of time. Once you start getting around there, you'll notice that I can start pushing this side into the swell. But first, I'm going to take and put a little stretch in the seat right here. Um, find where I want my screw hole. I'm going to just angle this spike in here. through just go a little bit at a time still because when you get up in here this cut almost starts climbing up a lot of a lot of swells have a little hollow spot right there you got to watch for um, if you cut straight through a lot of times you got a big heaping gap that you don't really that you don't want. If you notice, right here is where I've got to start climbing a little bit up to, to get in that hall spot. If I come straight through right here, it is, it's going to leave a, a gap. So I'm going to start climbing up a little bit. So I'm about ready to finish this cut here. Um, and I, what I'm gonna do is, is keep this angle going up and I'm gonna find where my skirt and my gullet meet and that's where I'm gonna come out of. And I'm just gonna make this cut right here and I have a reason for that. I'll show you. Well, it looks to me like I went plenty high. 
So when I finish here, I'll probably cut a little bit more out, a little bit more again. Like I say, you can always take more away, but you can't add it back. But remember in the beginning when I talked about um, a different way to do it and why I have my seat square, all the things is, is I don't take this seat out um, until it's ready, until all my seat cut, my lines are on and everything. Um, and it's ready to edge and burnish and then once I put it back in I'm just gonna glue the seat in so This piece right here is important because it's just gonna be My template for the other side and I'm able to do that because Of how I've squared everything up So instead of taking the seat out like the norm and folding it in half and doing all that I, I just eliminate that for me and it works good for me so that's how I'm teaching it so I'm just going to get this line scribe in here now keep in mind this is just a line that um, I'm going to follow, but I'm still going to pay attention. Um, anybody that puts a swell cover on knows that thickness of leather can make the seat cut change a little bit. Might have to raise up the cut a little bit or, or, or that to keep the, the nails and stuff from um, showing. I'm going to go ahead and completely finish the handhold cut. And again, start start pulling that seat down so it's nice and tight across here. Remember, I'm using about that much of the blade, trying not to um, try not to cut my swell as I'm cutting around here. This side, I I tend to go just a little bit farther than the other because. I'm pretty trusting that it's going to be pretty close to the same. Double check, make sure that your line jives with your swell. If you're pulling it on around, I'm going to turn around so you can see a little bit better here. See, that helps. I'm going to have plenty of coverage. Come to the halfway point. Remember on the other side what I've done here. I'm going to do the same thing. Pull this seat a little tight with my, with my awl. I like my screws to be in the same place. So I'm going to eyeball across, make sure using my welts as a reference point. These awls, you want to make sure as you're pulling them, you want to be tapping on them. If you just jab it in there and try to pull, a lot of times it'll tear. Uh, right there, so you want to be a little bit careful there. So you didn't get a hold of it. There we go. So I've got that stretched in there. Um, made it a little tough to cut, so I'm just going to look at this and give myself some relief to get some of that cut a little farther and then we'll pull it back in. Come to the same spot I was nervous about on the other side. Make sure I'm getting high enough.
than I am. So I can finish that cut on out. And it's exactly the same as the other side, which is a good thing. So as you can see, I've got plenty up here, um, and it's the same on both sides. I'm just going to take a little bit more out, out of here to drop that down some. When I come across this, I'm going to do the exact same mark on the other side. And then we're going to cut that relief out just a little bit more. Get them, get that seat down just a hair lower. And again, it's a little awkward, but they don't they don't say it's easy. Now it worked out just perfect. Right there. Same on this side. And that only took, well I'll show you how big the sliver is. As soon as I cut this one out, I'll I'll show you. That's how close for comfort we are. That we can have to start over we don't get it right but that's that's all it took right there to, to get that down that much more okay okay now that we're now that we're to that point I'm going to come back to the left side it's just my preference to work from the left side and pull this in tight Right now, I'm going to come from this other side and use my seat as a guide or my skirt as a guide to this cut. As you can see, I now I've got that. Um, I'm going to get rid of that. And if we've done our job and our skirts are the same measurement out the front. And I can do th that same thing on this other side. And as you can see, I've got some somewhere to be able to see the edge of that skirt. So when I make this finish cut, I know where I want to be. I'm going to pull this in. And that. I'm going to make that same mark here as I had on the other side. I'm going to get rid of that. Just like that. Alright, now that I'm to that point, I'm going to get my jaw down out of the way here and because I'm gonna get my my lines across so when when you when you hear saddle makers talk about lines the seat the front seat jockey should line up with the back jockey okay so I'm just gonna get this saddle and if you have a stand that you trust um, which I do I'm just going to transition these lines straight across and that's going to tell me where to start this initial cut, okay? 
Now, every, every, every maker is different. When they come across this cut here and start dropping down into your seat, I like to just make sure that that my rigging's covered, okay? So and so I'm just gonna I'm filling back here and I'm gonna try to cover that rig. And a lot of times it doesn't work out, but I think we're gonna be fine here. And then I want to stand back, really look at it, make sure I like it. Remember that edge that we had right here? That tells me where to be out here. You can use a set of wing dividers as well to do this. One thing, one thing you watch for here too is especially if you're making a round cut and I'm going to leave this square um, but if you're making a round cut I like to try to make sure that my leather on my rigging is not showing I'm okay if the D sticks out some but just a pet peeve of mine I don't like to see the rigging as, as little as I can so once I've marked that stand back look at it a lot of times I'll get a latigo carrier or something stick there and make sure I really like it um, but that's how I'm going to get my initial cut. Um, and again, I'm just going to cut it while it's in, still in the saddle and uh, show you what's next. I'm going to start it with my point knife here and be real careful not to cut the strap out of my jockeys. And I'm also going to Try not to pull on this too much. I got to keep it out of the way, but I don't really want this to stretch because I'm going to use it on the other side to get my my lines. Okay. Looking fairly good. difficult. I'm gonna finish this cut nice and slow. We don't want to cut her. We got a pretty good reveal there. Time we get everything tightened. We're gonna hit a little humpy right here so we'll take a little bit off. I like to have this border um, my lines all to jive with each other, okay? Um, we're close there. So we'll go to the other side. So now I'm going to take this other piece and put smooth to smooth. So I'm, I've swapped it clear over. And this tells me this is no different than taking the seat out and putting it in half or folding it in half, okay? This is gonna make it so my cuts match the other side. And then you gotta kinda of go a little bit at a time here. We stretched out some, we'll push that forward, get this same line here, and then bring it together. There's very little of a slip there. And again, for, for the sake of the saddle, let's, stand back and look at it make sure everything's jiving it should again we've just folded it in half basically you can see this has got to be pulled up so is that gonna match just look things over really good see to me right here I've got a it's diving in just a little bit so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this in fix that could have been the way I held it that looks more like it and then at this point you really could take it take the seat out and make this cut out of habit I just cut it so I can look at it and make sure I like it before I take it out and tool it and burnish it 
This will take some floral. Nice and easy right here. Don't cut your knife into the jockey. You can cut yourself, just don't cut the jockey. And we got our seat cuts. Okay, we're back. A couple days later, I had to do a little tooling in the seat, edge and burnish it. Um, but I've got it back to where we left off, and we're going to talk about why we did what we did on our ear cuts to begin with, and remember how we talked about making them shorter than, than we envisioned. As you can see right now, um, I was able to get my ear wrapped around there fairly good, but we're going to have to finish that cut here in a minute. But first off, we're going to go ahead and get this seat glued back from about here to here, and... I like to keep my fronts together and everything and glue the back half and then come back after that set bindings in I pull the front of the seat back and finish gluing the seat in um, so I do that at a later date um, we're just going to finish off this training with our ear cuts and how how I feels best for me personally and for some of our team to um, accomplish this and have a nice pretty ear cut okay so we're going to go ahead and glue Pull this up a little bit. We're going to get some glue and get this glued back and um, takes a minute to set so everybody knows how to glue. So we'll end the video here for a minute and get this glued and we'll be back. All right, glue's ready to set. I'm going to set the back half of the seat back in, strap it down, make sure it's good and tight. Right here where I've got my glue. I want that good and connected. In there, um, you pull the candle back, back in. Notice I leave, I left a wrinkle in there. I want to compress that candle in. It'll, it'll help keep it from wanting to pull out over time. So I go ahead and leave a wrinkle, and then I compress it in there, like that. And it takes a little work um, to really get it nice and smooth. But in the long run, I don't about my dishes wanting to do this by forcing it in there I'm kind of doing it the way it wants to do it get my glue nice and set here going to tool the dish later. Um, I've done it both ways. I've tooled it outside the saddle and inside the saddle, but this one just for sake of time, we're going to get you through the ears here and um, go that route. I'm going to trim a little bit of this excess off and try not to cut down into my other line, but I, I need a little bit of this out of the way so I can get my candle pliers on it. pinch my line in you come in here one thing I do I'm really careful of is is the, the the way this is standing up I want my pliers to be right with it if I go too far this way too far that way it kind of creates a line in the wrong spot so I'm, I'm gonna be real careful just kind of getting this this started and then I'm gonna come in with a another tool called a tickler and I'm gonna get my line in and, and this line is where my binding actually ends and then the stitch is just above that as you can see there I'm just kind of getting that tight and make sure the glue is holding
see there, and then I'm going to get my tickler. Um, I push really hard because this tells me where the top of the tree is. If I try to do this too soft, sometimes my line gets off, and let's hope we don't have a blooper here. This line is important where we end right here because um, that tells us where our binding is going to dive underneath that ear. Now you can see how far I'm going to have to finish that ear. But I like that because I can really control what that's going to look like once the binding's in on this saddle. And that's why I use this method. It's for me a safety method um, to get them ears as clean as possible for me. Again, I hope this helps somebody down the road that has trouble with the ears. Um, it's worked in our shop, you know, training new artisans and that. It's worked really well training this way for them too. So it's not just me, the reason why I'm training this. Um, so right here, you can see, I'm gonna take my, my uh, stylus and kind of show you what I'm gonna do here. Just withdrawing it but I'm gonna this radius of this ear I'm gonna keep that radius going and if you re remember earlier in the video that was pretty much there on the back side of the leather where we done that okay but this will tell me how it's gonna look when I finish here I do that on both sides you can see that's right where my binding is gonna tuck down in and when we make this cut here in a minute, I do it on an angle, about a 45, um, so that this just comes in and just wants to lay right against that binding nice and pretty. Um, but first, I want to punch a hole down in here. First, I'm gonna punch this hole, and when I start this, I'm gonna start pretty flat, but then when I, when I get started there, I'm gonna turn this hole and kind of get it towards a 45 angle as well. I'm going to start straight so it doesn't slip out of there. Sorry guys. Sleeping. Too much coffee this morning. Sticky little bugger. So that's my hole. Um, I like a hole there because that binding when you edge and burnish the edge of the binding it's round. So instead of just making a cut this gives a nice little place for that to lay in. Now we're really stuck in there. Okay, and then when we make this cut, we wanna make sure we have a really sharp knife. I got a little guppy here. Baby, come in, try to get you to where you can see how I'm angling this. But I'm going to start back here on my ear a little bit and get rid of some of that angle back in there because that binding is going to take up quite a bit of room here. And I'm going to just use that arch, that line we made with our stylist. Come right into that hole. Again, be very careful. Um, when you're making that cut, you don't want to overcut it because you'll be putting another seed in. Trimming a little bit of this excess out of there so I can give you an idea of what it's going to look like when that binding's on. See how it comes around? I've got enough room now for that binding to come right in there and, and keep this down as low as I can without a great big lump from that binding being under there. So if you come in closer, you can see that hole is angled the same as the cut there. And we'll do it again on this side. Start back in here. Start get, creating your angle then. It's, this one's awkward because I'm right-handed. So all I did was the reverse of what I did on this side. And as you can see, I've got that little bit of an angle. If you come in close here, you can see the angle I have. 
and it gives me that room for that binding to come right down under and it works the exact same on a Cheyenne roll, which we'll do We'll do another video later for you guys um, on doing a Cheyenne roll and getting those ear cuts as well. But I'm ready for a binding now um, for my ears. I got some trim work and stuff to do up here, but that's how I accomplish um, a nice looking ear cut. I like it round and arched. Um, I don't like straight cuts. That's a personal thing. Um, so I arch mine and kind of come back up into my into my spot here and that's what we do put the binding in and away we go